After having done a number of fake quotes videos, calling out, identifying, and telling you the provenance of a lot of misattributed quotations of mostly ancient authors, but a few moderns as well, I asked followers, fans, viewers, who they'd like to see next. And the biggest push was for Voltaire. Now, there's not a awful lot of fake quotes out there misattributed to Voltaire, but the ones that there are are significant. They're doozies. They're big ones. So we're going to look at each of these in turn. The first one is a fake quote that we absolutely have to highlight, not least because it keeps on circulating around and people who are pretty famous have been sharing it. Most recently, Elon Musk. And if they knew where it was really coming from, at least some of the people who are sharing it might not be because this quote to determine the true rulers of any society, all you must do is ask yourself the question, who is it I am not permitted to criticize or the variant that we see here to learn who rules over you, simply find out who you are not allowed to criticize. This is not by Voltaire at all. This is by a explicitly neo-Nazi white nationalist, Kevin Strom from a text called All America Must Know the Terror That Is Upon Us from 1993. So how did this end up getting attributed to Voltaire? It's probably having to do with the notion of enlightenment, which the Nazis were not a big fan of. But in any case, now you know where this one comes from, and perhaps that can help people resist the temptation to keep on recirculating this and attributing it to Voltaire. The second one is a quote that you've seen many, many times, maybe without an actual attribution, maybe attributed to Voltaire. I don't agree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. And is this Voltaire? No. There, and there's two different potential sources. One of them is clearly a source for this because we find it in a 1906 biography of Voltaire by Evelyn Beatrice Hall, who's writing under a pseudonym of Stephen G. Talentire. So what is this? This is not a quote of Voltaire. This is the author putting words into the mouth of their main figure in ways that we've seen in other fake quotes videos. Now, interestingly, she, the author, will say later on, I did not mean to imply that Voltaire used these words verbatim. Instead, it's supposed to be a summary of his thought. Some people want to claim that this stems from a letter that Voltaire wrote in 1770, but the formulation that is attributed there, which could be reinterpreted into this quote, doesn't actually appear in that letter, unfortunately. So that's kind of a dead end there. We get another misattribution by putting words into Voltaire's mouth by an author, but this one's a much more recent author. Yuval Noah Harari, in his best-selling book, Sapiens, A Brief History of Mankind, rather controversial. Some people have questioned the scholarship involved. And the fact that he says that Voltaire wrote something which he didn't, might actually add to that. There is no God, but don't tell that to my servant, lest he murder me at night. Not to be found in Voltaire's works is attributed to Voltaire falsely, wrongly by Harari. So that's a bit of a problem. Following out this theme of authors who have attributed things to Voltaire that then take on a life of their own. We have life as a shipwreck, but we must not forget to sing in the lifeboats. And Voltaire did in fact say that life, or if we want to be a little bit more specific, the world is a great shipwreck, right? But 
He didn't say we must not forget to sing in the lifeboats. And where does this come from? Well, a very prominent professor who wrote a lot of works on the Enlightenment, in, including the Enlightenment and Interpretation, the Rise of Modern Paganism. He is summarizing Voltaire's Candide. He translated it from French to English, and he also wrote an introduction. And there he is going to say, Voltaire preached by example rather than by precept that the recognition of the truth that this world is filled with evils leads to a certain good humor. If this life is a desert, it is our duty to make an oasis in it. If this life is a shipwreck, we must rescue as many as we can and not forget to sing in the lifeboats. This, I think, is the message of Candide. Then a little bit later on in that book, The Enlightenment, he is going to say this again. He is going to tell us we must not forget to sing in the lifeboats, essentially just taking stuff that he'd previously said and reformulating it a little bit. This becomes attributed to Voltaire, even though he didn't actually say it. And I expect that, you know, were Peter Gay to know about the contemporary proliferation of fake quotes, he probably would want to correct that. Now we get to a quote that is like the first one in that it's simply by somebody else and not Voltaire, misattributed to Voltaire, although it doesn't possess the noxiousness of quoting a neo-Nazi. So this one, cherish those who seek the truth, but beware of those who find it. Where does this come from? It's not from Voltaire. Instead, it is from the 20th century, great French author. So at least we're in the same country. André Gide, and it is from his Ainsi soit-il ou les jours sont faits, published in 1952. The next one, judge a man by his questions rather than by his answers. Again, a different author. In this case, it is by Pierre-Marc Gaston, the Duke of Levi, and it's coming from a work called Maxime et Reflexion sur différents sujets de morale et de politique, just straightforwardly translated maxims and reflections on different matters of morality and politics published in 1808 and it's coming straight from it so you know very clearly not by Voltaire Here's another one quite similar. Nothing can be more contrary to religion and the clergy than reason and common sense. So, you know, something that Voltaire could have said, it's in consonance with the things he does say, but it's just not by Voltaire. And we know this because it comes directly from somebody else's work. In this case, Paul-Henri Thierry, the Baron de Olbach, in his Théologie Portative ou Dictionnaire Abrégé de la Religion Chrétienne, published in 1768. So it's actually even from about the right time, but it's just not by Voltaire. It's great that people don't mistake this for something that just comes from Spider-Man and its lore. With great power comes great responsibility, but it is also not from Voltaire. We do find that it's from an era a little bit after his and a pretty definitive source. So it's found in a collection of the decrees made by the French National Convention. So we're talking about during the early years of the French Revolution, the people who are representing the French people are going to say qu'une grande responsabilité est la suite inséparable d'un grand pouvoir. So with great power, inseparably, there's a connection, there's a following of great responsibility. So easy enough translation. And, you know, we do know the source for this one. This one, no snowflake in an avalanche ever feels responsible. Cool saying, not by Voltaire. Instead, it is by a much more recent Polish author, Stanislaw Jerzy Lech, whose work, More Unkempt Thoughts, published in 1964. And we get it 
passed around by different people in January 1964. A radio broadcaster and newspaper columnist, Paul Harvey, published an instance of the saying in English, and then it starts appearing in other newspapers, and eventually it loses its tagline and somehow gets attributed to a totally different author, Voltaire. We finish up with this one that I think you've probably seen in a number of different variations. Here's three of them. Those who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. People will continue to commit atrocities as long as they continue to believe absurdities. If we believe absurdities, we shall commit atrocities. And there's other variants out there as well. So there is no clear match to this in Voltaire. There are some passages that are relatively close, but also vary from this quite a bit. So for example, in 1765, he will say, Certainement qui est un droit de vous rendre absurde est un droit de vous rendre injuste. So how should this be translated? Whoever has the right or the capacity to make you absurd. So notice it's not make you believe absurdities, make you absurd, make you look absurd. They can render you unjust. Is that the same thing as making you commit atrocities? No, it's not even close. So there's a parallel structure, but somebody has clearly taken massive liberties with what is being said. Now, interestingly, people start putting this out there. And in 1914, we get this said by a fictional version of Voltaire. 1933, it's described as a formula of Voltaire, and it just keeps going on all the way down the years with people attributing this to Voltaire and never actually going back to check the text to see whether he indeed said this or not? And the answer is he didn't say this particular quote, though he said something that is kind of, sort of, a little bit like that. As always, we'll end on the same general message. Let's try to cut down on fake quotes, understanding that we are definitely swimming against the tide. So when you see people posting things, you should exercise healthy suspicion. Many things out there that people are saying without any book being given or other citation, they're probably fake quotes. And you don't know until you put in the work to find out. So, you know, don't repost fake quotes, especially if you know that they're fake. Even if they sound cool, it's not a good idea to, to do that. You're just kind of cheapening the discourse out there and confusing people. And, you know, demand sources. When people put a quote out there, ask them, what book did that come from? Where did you actually find that. Most of the time, they have no answer for you. Also, you might want to check out Quote Investigator, which is a really good site, particularly for these later modern figures. There are some that are out there specifically for ancient philosophy, but Voltaire, of course, is an Enlightenment figure. So, Quote Investigator turns out to be the real greatest of all time for this one, at least for for the moment. That's all we have to say about this. We'll be doing plenty more of these fake quotes videos because there are a lot of fake quotes circulating around out there.